Hi. Uh, it's tax season once again, and you know, I used to actually man the phones at goldsilver.com when we first started out, uh, when people would call in. Uh, very often I was the one to pick up the phone. I haven't done that in years, but I used to have to answer a lot of questions about IRAs and 401ks and such. And uh, we just had a marvelous presentation done by Omar Navarez, and I didn't get a chance to listen to it when they were recording it, and I just listened to it now, and I was so impressed with the wealth of information that it has. Uh, it's, it's very large in scope, but very easy to understand. And so uh, I, I think uh, that it's very important to watch. And normally we don't uh, give this information out unless you, it, it's normally held behind the curtain. It's not uh, generally uh, available to the public. You either have to be a goldsilver.com customer or you have to sign up for the webinar. Uh, but uh, this one is so important. And with April 15th just around the corner, I think it's uh, very pertinent and people need to watch it right now. So have a seat, enjoy the show, and I'll see you at the end of the show with a couple of other points that I want to make. Thanks. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and get started. I um, want to thank everyone for joining us uh, this evening. And um, let's go ahead. So my name's Omar Navarez. I'm a personal consultant here at goldsilver.com. And over the years, I've helped thousands of customers with their gold and silver IRAs. Now, over time, I've had some of the same questions asked over and over again. And what we wanted to do with this webinar was to provide you answers to some of the most common questions that we hear, you know, particularly when it comes to legal protection, to privacy, to access, or to what we refer to in this webinar as bulletproofing. So meaning that simply by being aware of some of the information we're going to share, it puts you at a great advantage in that you understand you know, how to better protect your nest egg in virtually every scenario. So joining me for tonight's webinar, we have an industry expert with a great deal of experience in the self-directed retirement arena. Uh, he's an IRA specialist with AccuPlan, uh, which is a self-directed IRA custodian. Now, we've been working together for years now, and I can attest to his great deal of industry knowledge. And having said that, it's my pleasure to introduce Ben Barker from AccuPlan. So welcome, Ben, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Hey, thanks, Omar, for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So just a quick disclaimer here before we get started. Uh, Goldsilver.com does not provide investment advice or recommendations, and all information and materials are for educational purposes only. Okay, so just want to give you guys a little bit of a brief outline of our presentation here tonight. So we're going to start with an overview of what a gold and silver self-directed IRA is and how it works. And once we've touched on the basics, we'll spend most of our time talking about the protection these vehicles offer. Uh, what kind of protection do I have from others? What happens in case of a bankruptcy? Do my creditors have a right to my assets? How about the government? How much protection do I have from them? How much information does the custodian disclose to the IRS? Uh, how fast can I get my metal shipped to me? Uh, these are all questions that I hear from clients on a daily basis and questions that I personally had when I got started. So many cost customers often feel that uh, they're trapped once they've set up an IRA and they feel that they are limited in the actions they can take thereafter. You know, how easily can I sell? Uh, can I take possession? Can I take action in the face of potential threats like confiscation of gold and silver? You know, although there are risks with any investment, we simply want to clear up the misconceptions that, uh, and you know, and give you a better understanding of the flexibility that you actually have with these retirement vehicles. Uh, well, let's go through some of the basic information here. And, and Ben, would you tell us a little bit about the structure and the advantages of a self-directed IRA? Uh, what is a self-directed IRA, and how is it different from a traditional plan through a Schwab or a Fidelity, let's say? Yeah, no problem. Most people are familiar with a traditional IRA, say with a Fidelity or a Schwab, because that's what most people have. And when they, when you invest with a, a company like that, what you're specializing is is in stocks and bonds, mutual funds, paper assets. So that's what most people are familiar with. Now, what we do is what's called a self-directed IRA. It has the same rules, the same guidelines as any other IRA. We're not under different criteria that a Schwab or a Fidelity is. 
But when we say it's self-directed, we truly mean that it is self-directed. By self-directed, we mean that you can invest in investments that you normally cannot invest with with your traditional IRA. So uh, the main things that we focus on are real estate, gold and silver, businesses, private placements, loans. And so if you, if you look at the comparison between the two, one is focused on paper assets, stocks, bonds, mutual fund, where we focus more on a hard asset, one that you can feel and touch. So that's the main difference between a, an IRA with like a swab or a Fidelity and an IRA with us. Okay, and thanks for clarifying this for us, Ben. And this is the first layer of bulletproofing that we see in a self-directed IRA. You're essentially ridding yourself from all counterparties involved in a paper IRA. There's no additional financial entities involved. There's no mutual fund company involved. No risk of a market crash or exchange risks, which do actually threaten paper holdings in an IRA. Um, and this becomes particularly critical when you're talking about physical gold and silver because your only alternative are paper funds like ETFs, which you know have hundreds if not thousands of claims on a single ounce of gold or silver. Um, anyhow, now that we've clarified that point, we can get more into the ins and outs of asset protection you know, that these plans offer and how they can be bulletproof. Uh, we'll start by going into the legal protection offered, and then we'll get into the flexibility they offer under different potential scenarios. So let's talk about uh, protection in the scenario of a bankruptcy. What would happen if I go bankrupt and I have, say, 100 gold eagles stored in a self-directed IRA account at Brink somewhere? Um, are those assets at risk, Ben? You know, the, the good thing with retirement plans, whether they be a 401k or whether they be an IRA plan, they are protected from bankruptcy. Um, you need to be a little bit careful because each state is different and, and you need to find out what each state's rules are. There, are. there are federal regulations and federal guidelines out there, but there are also state guidelines. So, but a lot of people have, don't understand that if there are creditors or lawsuits or bankruptcy, in a lot of cases that actually is going to be protected at the assets that are held in a retirement account. So in your example, if you had Silver Eagle, say it brinks in a, in a vault inside your IRA, you're going to have some level, maybe if not all, level of protection from creditors and lawsuits and bankruptcy. Okay, okay, but you're saying that the degree of protection will vary by state? It, it, it does. You know, they, they're, you can see from the slide there, there's a, a little link there. You can go on to different links and different websites and you can find out per your state what the different rules are related to it. I would obviously consult with a, an attorney, a bankruptcy attorney, or, so that you would know exactly what the rules are, because each state is going to vary depending on where you're at. But as a general rule, bankruptcy and, and creditors and lawsuits have a level of protection from your IRA. Okay, okay, perfect. And does the state where I reside, is, it, is that what matters, or is it the state where my custodian is located, or is it the state where my metals are? Yeah, so... Uh, just to briefly, uh, we have a, a licensed trust company and uh, IRA custodian. It's located in Nevada. Um, we store our, bring, our our metals in a vault that brings in Salt Lake City, Utah, and then obviously okay. all of our clients are, are nationwide. Um, I would advise with a, a bankruptcy attorney to get the exact rules, but in most cases, and from my experience, it's usually the state that you reside because the state you reside is where you're going to actually claim your bankruptcy. You're going to go through a bank, bankruptcy attorney or a, a lawsuit or whatever you're going to go through in the state that you reside. So in most cases, in my experience, it's been the state that you reside, but um, I, I am an IRA specialist, not a not a necessarily an attorney, so I, I sure. obviously would you know consult with a bankruptcy attorney, but uh, most times that I've known, it's been in the state that you reside. Okay, okay, perfect. Well, very interesting. So, so we're seeing here that these vehicles offer a great deal of protection. First, from yourself, you know, in the event uh, you make imprudent financial decisions that leave you in a state of bankruptcy, your self-directed IRA assets are, for the most part, bullet bulletproof. Now, there are some exceptions depending on the state you reside in. You know, however, for the most part, you do have a great deal of protection. You know, secondly, uh, in the event of a lawsuit, you know, again, your self-directed IRA would, for the most part, be bulletproof. Okay, now to continue. Uh, question, we at goldsilver.com get more and more, and probably the reason you're signed into the, you know, that you signed up for the webinar tonight is to find out what happens in the event of a government measure that threatens your gold and silver IRA holdings. You know, although from our company standpoint, 
we see a nationalization or a confiscation scenario as unlikely, you can't dismiss any possibility, you know, given the actions you've seen governments and banks take over the last decade. So having said that, any regulation or law, you know, would require time. It would require a legislative process, a voting process, and more than likely a lag be, you know, period before the law is actually implemented and enforced, which would give most of us ample time to take preventative measures. You know, but if you are of the belief that confiscation will occur, which plenty of you are, uh, you are probably better off holding the metal in your hand. And you'll see here in just a few moments that there are actually account types that allow for this or may allow for this. So having said that, as investors ourselves here at goldsilver.com, we actively monitor not only long-term market cycles, but also political trends that could threaten our holdings. And I'm certain that most of you hearing this webinar tonight who are bullion investors do your own due diligence and keep up with this. You know, whether you do your own research or you use our daily news briefings as a gold silver insider, the point is you have to keep informed. Now, this brings us to the topic of possession, Ben. Informed investors empower themselves with the working knowledge and understanding of the flexibility their self-directed plans offer. For instance, if I were to call you up and request my metals be shipped to me because I just don't like the political climate or I hear some news about a piece of legislation that could threaten my silver holdings in my IRA, how fast would you be able to do this for me? Yeah, we can typically ship out metals within 24 to 48 hours. The process involves setting up uh, or filling out a withdrawal form. So we could mail you the withdrawal form. It's online, so you can get it online if you want as well. But you would just, on the withdrawal form, you would indicate how much metals that you want shipped to you, the type. And what we would then do is we would contact Brinks and have Brinks ship the metals. All the metals that are shipped out are insured and registered. Uh, but it typically takes Brinks anywhere between 24 to 48 hours for them to ship the metals, uh, which means you can have the metals in your account or in your house within a week to a week and a half, depending on where you are located in the state or in the country. Wow. So it could be as fast as a single day by the time it's out of the facility. Yeah. If, if we get a notification, obviously, early in the morning, then we can uh, notify Brinks and they can have it shipped out by the end of the day. If we get it later on in the day, then usually by the next day, the metals are shipped out. Okay. Wow. And how about if I'm your client and I don't necessarily want to take delivery, but I do want to visit the metals I have in storage. Are you able to accommodate that type of request? Yeah, we, we are able to do so. Now, we don't get a lot of clients that come and visit uh, our storage facility because obviously it's in Utah and they would have to make a special trip there. But Brinks has been uh, very good in allowing our clients to go there and view their metals because there are uh, the concerns over is my metals physically there and, and those types of concerns. Another feature that you could do if you really wanted to take possession of your metals but you did not actually want to have them shipped directly with you you could open up a personal account with Brinks and then you would just instruct us to transfer the metals from your IRA account with Brinks to your personal account with Brinks and that would actually happen even faster than uh, shipping the metals directly to you. Oh, okay. Wow. So another option there. And um, well, we here at Gold Silver, we often get requests about third-party certificates to prove metals are actually at the vault. Uh, can I expect a title or a third-party assurance from the custodian or from the vault where my gold and silver are being stored? You bet, yes. What will happen is um, we will uh, lock in some metals and we'll wire the funds to goldsilver.com. They will then turn around and ship the metals. Every day, Brinks gets metals in and confirms that the metals are there, they're valid and legit. They then send me an email notification every day instructing me all of the metals that had arrived that day. We code the metals as being received, and as soon as the metals are physically received, an email certificate goes directly to the client. It tells them the name of the client, where the metals are stored, and what is being stored, whether it be gold eagles or silver eagles or bars, and it tells the quantity. So they have a certificate there. Now, if they want either an, an extra be bonus or benefit, we can get Brinks on their letterhead to confirm the metals have arrived. Typically, Brinks just sends me an email and I code them in and I send a certificate from our company. But we can get third-party authorization directly from Brinks as well. Okay, so just an extra degree of uh, your reassurance there. Okay, well, um, now privacy is another big 
factor for a lot of our clients at goldsilver.com. And all purchases done through our website are completely private. And when it comes to retirement account purchases, you know, the same privacy advantages remain true. Uh, however, what I often hear from investors, Ben, is that if they hold physical bullion in a retirement account, uh, that you, as their self-directed custodian, have to report their holdings in detail to the IRS or another government agency. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, no problem. At, at the end of every year, we are required to disclose to the IRS a form called a 5498. If you want to go Google it, you can see what it looks like. But it's a very basic form. The only, form, the only information that we have to disclose to the IRS is your name, your address, your social, and the current value of your IRA. We do not disclose what is actually inside the IRA. So basically at the end of the year, if you had 100 silver eagles and it was worth $20 per ounce, $2,000 value, we disclose that $2,000 value to the IRS. The IRS does not have any knowledge that you have metals with us or that the metals are stored at Brink. So it's very private. Okay, perfect. So if I'm interpreting this correctly then, Ben, it seems that a self-directed IRA invested in physical bullion carries the same level of privacy than if invested with a traditional custodian in paper. Correct, yes. We, like I said earlier, we're on the, on the same guidelines as, the, as Fidelity and Swap. They have to do the same information. They have to report the IRS your value. But like, like Fidelity and like Swap, they're just reporting the value. They're not reporting every stock that you've bought and sold throughout the year. That would be crazy for the IRS to have to, look, to review all that. The same is true with us. We are just disclosing the value of your IRA without disclosing what was purchased or sold to that given year. Okay, okay. So IRS really wouldn't know the difference between an IRA account holding 50,000 in bonds versus one holding 3,000 silver eagles, right? Exactly. All right. So, hope everyone heard that. You know, that's one of the most common misconceptions out there. You keep your privacy virtually in every scenario. Now, let's say that I do ask of you as my custodian to deliver my medals to me. What uh, type of recording uh, reporting, excuse me, occurs here? When you request a distribution, we basically, you fill out a withdrawal form and you send the withdrawal form to us telling us how many metals you want to have shipped. We take the ounces of metals and multiply it by the current spot price on that day as the value for the metals. And then we ship you those metals. At the end of the year, well actually January of the next year, so if you were to take a, a shipment today, January 31st, 2015, we will send you a 1099. The 1099 looks very similar to the 5498. It has your name, your address, your social, and the value of the metals that were shipped. Again, we do not disclose to the IRS that we physically shipped you metals. We disclose the year-end value or the value at the time we shipped it. So again, there is complete privacy there. The IRS never knew you purchased it to begin with in your IRA and they don't know that we actually ship the metals to you as a distribution. Oh, okay, interesting. And then just to get back on the sellback value there, uh, so I'm assuming that those holding products with buyback prices that typically trade above spot like eagles or maples are generally at an advantage here, right? Definitely. So the, the only way that we can value or know to value metals is based off spot price. I mean, the spot price is what everyone values their metals off. And obviously there is some commission markups and things involved with what type of metal you purchase. But we just value the metals based off the current spot price. So if you did buy 2,000 silver, you know, 200 silver eagles and the spot price is $200, we will just multiply that to get you the current spot price. Now, if you were to go in to sell the metals the next day, you would probably have a little bit of a markup that you could actually sell back to because um, we just base it off the current spot price. You are correct. Okay, okay, I see. So, and uh, just personally, have you noticed any trends with regard to physical distributions amongst your clients lately? Just given that gold and silver prices are lower today uh, you know, than they have been over the course of the last couple of years? Yeah, we're, we're seeing a lot, especially in the clients that get over 59 and a half, because obviously if you're under 59 and a half, you have a penalty for taking metals out sooner than 59 and a half. It's a 10% penalty. So, but those clients that have reached that age, a lot of them are taking it out right now. And the reason why they're taking it out is because they, they, silver is currently trading lower than it has historically. And so what they're wanting to do is they're wanting to lock in the taxes on it at today's rates 
the hope and the, or anticipation is that it's going to go back up to 30 or 40 like it has been. And so when it does go back up, they would have paid the taxes at a lower tax rate today with a lower value than what it will be in the future. So definitely we, we started to see a little higher trend than probably normally we would. Wow, very interesting. So for those of you who are at distribution age, it seems that many are taking advantage of lower gold and silver prices to get more ounces in hand uh, while having less of a tax liability in dollar terms than you know, would have been the case a couple years back. And this seems to be a trend, like Ben mentioned, at least for those of you with traditional IRAs, uh, a little bit of a different story for those of us who have Roths. Uh, now, uh, the last topic I wanted to cover with you, Ben, was the LLC with checkbook control, okay, so under, you know, under a self-directed IRA structure. Uh, I think it's been really over the last three years that I've seen more and more customers with these types of accounts uh, come to us. Uh, can you explain the structure, and is this something AccuPlan offers? Yes, definitely. Um, AccuPlan does offer the IRA LLC. Um, the structure is very similar to what you would normally do. So a, a client sets up an IRA account and they transfer money to us, they buy metals. They also have the ability to set up an LLC, which we can do for them in all 50 states. So the process would involve filling out an application and opening up an LLC. They would tell us the name of the LLC, the address, and all the detail that goes along with it. We will open up an LLC account, get it filed with the state, get an EIN number, and help them open up a bank account at a local bank. They then can in turn transfer those money that they have with us into the LLC to buy the gold and silver. Now, there's a, not a lot of ruling on this, so I'm going to kind of give you my, uh, my thoughts of what I think is, is safe and reasonable because the IRS really has not really come out and given us a black and white answer. Okay. In our opinion, if you buy or sell gold or silver eagle coins, that they are the U.S. minted coins, that you can buy and store them in the LLC because as a manager of the LLC and you're buying legal tender technically, it can be stored there. Now, if you buy gold or silver bars, then our opinion is we need to physically store those bars based on what we read. Now, that's our interpretation on the law. As the manager of the LLC, you make the ultimate choice of what you want to invest and what you want to hold, and I just want you to be aware of the rules so you can understand, do I feel comfortable setting up the LLC and storing metals, or is, is it just safer for me to store them in an IRA account? Um, you'd make that ultimate decision of what you think is right for you storing it. Okay, okay, thank you for that. And that's a little bit of a loophole that exists that allows for clients to legally take possession then, huh? Correct. I mean, it's, it's people do it all the time with real estate. We transfer cash into an LLC that they're the manager of, and then they go buy real estate with it. They're holding the real estate, managing the real estate, things like that. The same concept applies with with metals, although we don't really have any specific ruling on how exactly. Okay. Okay. Well, there you have it. For those of you who, at all costs, want your metals in your hand, uh, but also want the tax benefits of a retirement plan, uh, this could be the option for you. And if you're concerned about confiscation to that extent, to that level, then this is something you can seriously consider. And uh, Ben, what steps would a current uh, self-directed account holder have to take to set up checkbook control? If they've already got the IRA account established, that's obviously the, uh, one step further than what they need to do. They just would go through the process of setting up the LLC, getting the application for the LLC. Once the LLC is established, they would send us a direction form that says, I want to transfer my metals that are currently held at American Estate and Trust, AccuPlan, have them move directly into the LLC account. Okay, okay. Well, if there are any more specific questions on this particular type of structure, feel free and reach out to Ben directly, who has a great deal of expertise on the topic. Uh, once you have your desired structure established, you then contact us at goldsilver.com to assist you with, with the purchase. Now, with that, uh, I did want to wrap it up here as we're running a little short on time. What I wanted to do uh, with the questions coming in was to have everyone direct them at either IRA at goldsilver.com or to Ben, who email I'm going to be providing in just a minute uh, to allow for a more personalized response given your unique circumstances. Uh, I hope most of you take something from this and now have a better understanding of how private and dynamic a self-directed IRA can be. 
Uh, not only do you have a great deal of legal protection under both state and federal law, but you also have plenty of flexibility to change about your strategy as you see fit. Uh, we couldn't tell you what the likelihood of a confiscation is. Uh, we couldn't tell you if it's going to happen next month or next year or in five years. But we can tell you that self-directed accounts give you a tremendous amount of flexibility and discretion so that if you perceive the threat to be eminent any time in the future, you can act and you can act quickly. So for all remaining questions and more specific questions like I mentioned um, you know, that weren't answered, I want you all uh, and encourage you to call us here at goldsilver.com to speak to one of our IRA specialists here. Uh, for those of you who have specific custodian questions, feel free to reach out to Ben. The email uh, for Ben here is ben at acuplan.net or the number listed in the following slide here. And uh, then again, I do want to mention that in appreciation to all those who are listening here, uh, goldsilver.com would like to offer you free domestic shipping on any IRA order placed through April 15th. So the custodian doesn't matter, you know, whether you use AccuPlan or any of the other custodians that goldsilver.com does work with, uh, as long as you place your order prior to the tax deadline, April 15th again. Uh, mention the discount code displayed on the slide here uh, to the IRA specialist that you're working with when you place your order and you can take advantage. And uh, Ben, did you want to tell them anything about the promotion that you're offering? You bet. So um, I, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier. We have two companies, AccuPlan and American Estate and Trust. And if you if you go to goldsilver.com's website, you'll see our, our link, American Estate and Trust, and you can go to a, a link that has a specific web page for, for goldsilver.com clients. But if you actually act as well by April 15th and setting up a new account, um, we, we charge $150 annual, annual with a $35 setup fee, but we would waive the setup fee so we'd only charge you $150. The fastest way that I found for clients to set up an account is actually go to the link. There's a link there on the page, but if you can't, don't have the access to write down that link, again, you go to goldsilver.com's website, click on our link, and all the information is there for you as well. Okay, great. Well, thanks again, Ben, for your time and your insights here, and thanks to all who attended. You know, if you'd like a recorded copy of the webinar, feel free to email us again at ira at goldsilver.com, or um, you, know, you can have an IRA specialist follow up with you as well. Uh, our goal here, like always, is to educate you before making any investment decision, and I hope we accomplish some of this, this you know, some of that this evening. Um, I'd like to invite everyone who hasn't already to call into our offices. You know, every customer at GoldSilver.com has an assigned personal consultant to guide you and assist you through this process. So, uh, again, thanks everyone. Have a good evening, and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks, Omar. Wasn't that a wealth of information? The laws and the different investment vehicles have changed a lot since I was on the phones years ago. Uh, if you have any questions, please email the, the email address that Omar gave uh, in the video and our experts will get back to you with all the answers to your questions. And there's another IRA video coming or an IRA presentation coming up, a webinar, uh, on Wednesday, April 9th at 4.30 p.m. Pacific. Uh, specifically about 401ks. So please join us then. Go to the front page of goldsilver.com and uh, you'll see the 401k advertisement right there and just click sign up here. Thank you.